Hello friends, this video on biodiversity and conservation part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this, with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us quickly look at some of the questions and see if we have got it right. So question number one, name the three important components of biodiversity. Now, as I had mentioned before that biodiversity can happen at many different levels and based on the level of biodiversity, they have been divided into three components, genetic diversity, species diversity and ecological diversity. So genetic diversity, it talks about one particular species, but even, when that, even within that particular species, you see differences between organism and that happens due to differences in their genes. The second is the species diversity where you do not talk about one particular species. You are talking about different species but they all are present in the same location. Now since they all belong to different species so they have differences. So the variety arises due to the difference due to their difference in species. Then the third level is ecological diversity which happens at an ecosystem level. That means now we are not talking about the particular location. It is not about the same location. So it is like different different ecosystems. So some areas will be rich in uh, the, the number. They will have more variety of ecosystems. Some area will have lesser variety of ecosystems. So at an ecosystem level we talk of ecological diversity. So these are the three components of biodiversity. Question number two, how do ecologists estimate the total number of species present in the world? Now, as I have told before also that it is a very tedious task to expect that a particular, uh, the scientists will go and they will, they will just roam around in search of new species and then they will study them and then describe them. However, there are certain methods using which they are able to get a rough estimate of the number of species which are present in the world. So these estimates are done based on the species richness in specific regions. Now when I was talking about species area relationships, I was telling you right that if, if you want to know how many species, species are present in that particular area, you can do that with the help of species area relationship and that is how a rough estimate is obtained. So that is one way by which ecologists do this. So following factors help to determine the species richness. Now how do we know how many different species live in that particular area? So one is latitudinal gradient. Now based on the location of that particular region, if it is near the equator, it might have more biodiversity. If it is far from the equator, if it is towards the poles, it will have less biodiversity. So the latitudinal gradient, that is the exact location in terms of the latitude, can also tell us a lot about the species richness and the species area relationship. So if you know the area for which you are trying to find out the species richness, so the equation for species area relationship can also help you to determine the number of species present in that particular area. Extrapolating the data received for various plants and animals, the total number of species can be estimated. So here we are only talking about estimation. So this is not going to be the exact data because it is all based on calculation and this calculation is all, uh, I mean, it is a generic calculation. So you really don't know if that particular species have these many number of organisms or not. So it is just a rough idea based on uh, the factors which determine how biodiversity vary from one location to another. Question number three. Give three hypotheses for explaining why tropics show greatest level of species richness. Now this can be explained with the help of latitudinal gradient concept now, as I said, that as per the latitude, uh, as per latitudinal gradient diversity concept, that is LDG, it says that those places which are present near the equator, so if the equator is somewhere here, so the places present near the equator are more diverse when compared to the places which are located at the poles. Now, we have to give the reasons why this is so. 
So one reason is the tropical latitudes remain undisturbed for years. So these are the tropical latitudes. So the areas or the latitudes which are present near the equator, they are tropical latitudes. Whereas the latitudes which are present near the poles are the polar latitude or temperate latitudes. So these latitudes, they have not experienced much of disturbances. Whereas the polar areas, they keep on experiencing very frequent glaciations because of which the entire species uh, get disturbed. Destroy. So that is one reason why tropical latitudes have more variety of living organisms. Suitable environment. So the climatic changes in the near in the polar areas are uh, unpredictable and they keep changing very frequently. So they are not very suitable for a niche. So the organisms cannot adapt to such frequently changing environment and they uh, do not survive there. Whereas in case of the tropical areas, they have suitable environment. They do not, they are quite predictable. Climates do not change very frequently. So these are some of the reasons why the environment is suitable for the survival of animals. Availability of more solar energy. So solar energy is something which is required for the sustenance of living organisms. And due to the location, so the equator receives more of solar energy. And due to the presence of more solar energy, the productivity of living organisms uh, is more. And therefore, they, they are able to survive here better. So these are some of the hypotheses which explains why the concept of latitudinal diversity gradient exists. Question number four. What is the significance of the slope of regression in a species area relationship? So let us quickly see what is species area relationship. This one's now relationship that is log s is equal to log c plus z log a. Now if you remember the exact relation was s is equal to c a to the power z. So the relationship stated that the species richness s is directly proportional to the area a. So when you take log on both sides you arrive at this equation. So in this equation which is the slope now this equation is of the form y is equal to mx plus c. So here y is log s x is log a. So what is m? m is the slope. So what is slope? Slope in this case is z. So z denotes the slope. Now the question is what is the significance of slope? Now what, what does a steeper slope or a less steeper slope tells us? What does it indicate? So the slope indicates the species richness in an area. And how does it indicate that? Now if the slope is steeper, steeper means the value of slope is higher. So when z will be large, then the slope will be steeper. So when the st slope is steeper, that means it uh, we are actually finding out the species area relationship for a larger area. Similarly, for a smaller area, the slope is going to be smaller that is the value is going to be smaller and it is going to be less steeper so looking at the slope of the line we can actually decide which area we are looking at question number five what are sacred groves what is their role in conservation so sacred groves are the name itself says sacred means something which is pure and holy. So sacred groves are like sacred ecosystems. So what do we mean by that? So these are tracts of forests of special religious importance and therefore they have been preserved. Now, as I said, human beings for their own benefit, they keep on explo exploiting special forests here and there. Sometimes because they want to build houses, sometimes because they want it for agriculture, sometimes because they want to grow a particular type of organism which is of commercial importance. So due to XYZ reasons, they keep exploiting the forests. Now, there are certain areas of the forests which are preserved just because they hold some special religious importance. Maybe uh, some uh, tribal people think that some deity lives there and that area should be well protected. So there can be n number of religious sentiments attached to that particular area and due to those sentiments that tract of forest is preserved. So these kind of areas of forests are known as sacred groups and that is why we have the term sacred because it has some religious value associated with it.
so it is protected community because that religious thing is believed by a particular community so that community as a whole will protect that area so what is its role in conservation now even if it is a small tract of land or a big tract of land at least the good thing is that something is getting conserved so you have more green plants in that area you have some living organisms or that particular part of the forest is able to conserve the ecosystem so it helps in conserving a variety of plants and animals of a particular area so even if uh, the rest of the forest got cut down but at least some part of it could be preserved so at least it helped the environment or the ecosystem in some way so it plays an important role in the process of conservation question number 6 among the ecosystem services are control of floods and soil erosion. How is this achieved by the biotic components of the ecosystem? So the biotic component of an ecosystem are the living components of the ecosystem. So that biotic component of ecosystem which plays a major role in flood control and soil erosion are the plants. So plants greatly help to reduce soil erosion and also to control floods. You know how? That's because the roots of the plant, they get deep inside the soil and they bind themselves to the soil. So in a way, they hold the soil together. So they prevent the soil from being carried away by water. And that is how it prevents soil erosion. And again, the soil is something which is porous. So it has pores in it. So because of which what happens during floods, a lot of water passes through those pores of the soil. So the the roots make the soil porous and these porous soil help to control floods and again since roots hold the soil in a very tight way therefore it prevents the soil from being carried away by flowing water and that's how it prevents soil erosion so basically roots of the plant play a very important role in enriching the soil by preventing soil erosion and also by making the soil porous because of which floods can be controlled so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson conservation of biodiversity and I hope this lesson would have helped you. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.